Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My guest today is Yuri Rivno from RSA Security. Yuri, I just want to talk to you a little bit about targeted attacks. Big news these days, you can't open the newspaper or go to a news website without seeing a very uh, a high increase in these types of targeted attacks against high profile companies. And your own company was included in this. Uh, can we start off a little bit, just explain what happened in your case, uh, how the attackers got in and how you were able to, what, what was the red flag that, that triggered it? Sure. In our case, in the RSA case, uh, the attack started with spear phishing, targeted attacks against specific RSA individuals, employees. I wouldn't say that they were very senior individuals. Um, one of these individuals opened um, the actual mail. Um, it, the email had um, a 2011 recruitment plan in the title. They opened that, there was a file inside, they clicked on that, and then a zero-day vulnerability in Flash allowed the attacker to install malware on that machine. The next step after that was to install some kind of uh, remote connectivity, allowing the fraud, the, the, the attacker to actually um, control that uh, device and you know, access the network. From that point, basically, they're already inside. They're looking at the firewall from within rather than from, from the outside. And I would say that this is the sort of um, trend that we're seeing across all of these attacks that you're mentioning. Right. The, the, the trend is not trying to penetrate the perimeter defenses uh, directly, not trying to understand how the network is structured and what the vulnerabilities are, but rather go after the employees. So the attacks focus on the employees. Everyone has a, a LinkedIn account, a Facebook account. Right. They know that these are employees in, in the corporate and after they uh, hit the employees, then they're already inside. They've just breached the perimeter. How would you describe the attackers? So describing the attackers, I would say that um, today it's a little bit confusing because you hear about all sorts of attacks. Uh, I don't want to mention all of these names, but clearly there's a lot of uh, groups, a lot of motivations. In our case, it wasn't motivated by financial, uh, you know, financial gain. It wasn't for fun. It was basically part of a wave of attacks against critical infrastructure uh, companies uh, worldwide, um, a lot of them in the US. Um, and the, the motivation is to penetrate into critical infrastructure. Today, critical infrastructure is not just from tr transportation systems and utilities and electricity. Today, it's also the digital in, uh, mm -hmm. critical infrastructure, systems. financial systems. Um, and try to gain assets, try to get intellectual property, try to get uh, you know, very sensitive information from these, from these places. That was the motivation of, of the uh, attack. And this also tells you who these people are. Uh, and the, the fact group, that they used a zero-day vulnerability means it wasn't something that was blasted out to multiple targets. Yeah, it was not, targets. It was not was blasted to multiple targets. Focused. If you have a zero-day vulnerability, you keep it to a very select target, right? Um, I would profile these uh, attackers as um, a group of people that, um, you know, first of all, they're very determined, they have their motivation, uh, but they're also, they have a lot of practice in doing these sort of things. You know, by the time that RSA was attacked, they had a lot of practice uh, in, you know, navigating a lot of security networks, right? Um, so I, I, I give the analogy of uh, the Navy SEALs, you know, Team 6, the one that uh, hit uh, Osama bin Laden. Think about the equivalent of this sort of operation in the digital world, right? Um, which means a team of people that know how to do these sort of Very things. Precise, they, build their own, they, they build their own custom tools. Um, uh, they have a lot of experience, right? They know how to go in, they know how to go out. I will tell you that we detected this uh, attack, but most of the organizations under attack by the same type of uh, uh, individuals or, or groups don't actually detect these sort of attacks. You asked about right. how we detected Yeah, the, you're the a attack. security company, so I mean, you, so, I would, my, my, my guess is that you have a better security posture. Yeah, that, that's, that, you asked about how we actually detected right. it, and, and I think that's the uh, kind of a lesson that uh, we can all learn about uh, all of these sort of attacks. Because they breach the perimeter so easily, and think about all of these companies that were attacked, uh, I, I would say and it's an unofficial toll, but it's over 100 companies that were attacked, right. very big corporations, critical infrastructure, defense contractors, very serious uh, security, very big security investment, you know, the, the, just the budget for security. And they use every type of possible tool, you know, every type of uh, uh, perimeter defense, uh, etc. What it tells us that the current security, you know, the current technology uh, uh, is, is basically uh, good against all types of attacks, but not against these, these kind types of new of types of attacks, right? Which means that you always have to, you almost have to assume that the perimeter will be breached because of this sort of attacking the employee, and then the employee is like a tunnel inside the perimeter which means you have to uh, focus more on the inside, understanding what your users are doing, understanding where the data is, um, 
and then researching every kind of small incident and every small alert that your systems, your detection systems on the inside, um, uh, you know, give. Right, give. Right. And then you are able, if you have the right investigation tools, you're able to quickly identify an intruder and, you know, make sure that you you, you have all sorts of aggressive measure around, around that and against that intruder. And in your case, you use technology to trigger this red flag that, that yes. confirms so, that you so actually we, have So we build some internal controls. It's almost like, uh, you know, cameras, if you will, that look on the inside rather than on the outside, right? And uh, understanding uh, where the data is, um, what users are typically doing. And this generated a very, very, very weak signal, a kind of a small alert, if you will. We have a team of people that were able to uh, look at that and say, okay, this looks interesting, let's investigate that. We actually use NetWitness, which is a very good investigation tool. Later, later on, we announced that we acquired that company. NetWitness and these sort of technologies allow you to very, very quickly investigate these sort of things. They also have detective power, so they can help you to generate some of these uh, alerts. Uh, because they can correlate data you know, inside the network. Um, I would say that the combination of detection and good investigation tools helped us identify the fact that we do have an intruder uh, in the house, uh, which helped us quickly understand what was taken, what was not taken, yeah. and you know, drive the intruder uh, away. How long was the intruder sitting in there before your... your I, I don't want to plan. give any specifics uh, uh, on that, but I would just say that it was relatively uh, quickly that we uh, identified this relative to everything that I know about from other types of attacks. Right. And again, let me remind you that remind you that most of the companies don't really know that they are under attack right, right. because There's it's a, a lot very of very good. Companies out there that are owned right now and not that they don't know, or if they know that they were under attack, they don't know what was taken. Right, you know right. what I mean? The forensics so, is not so, so so that's the kind of thing that is important in this sort of new type of attacks. What kinds of internal changes have happened since uh, since you went public with this uh, breach? Uh, what kind of internal changes have been made around user education, around technological improvements, addition of new technology have you done to you know harden your posture? So obviously security is, is a journey, right? And we started investing in all of these internal controls. We kept investing in these same controls. So more detection capabilities, more analysis done you know, on the inside rather than trying to um, make the perimeter more uh, more secure, you know, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's the key. Uh, and then the other uh, things is well, user education is very very important, and obviously we did more education after uh, after that. Um, but it's not going to um, seal your perimeter because. All they need is just one individual that will, will, will fall, fall for some social engineering trick, if right. you know what and I mean. Game over. Um, let's also understand you have all of these targeted attacks, but you also have all of the very basic uh, Trojans, like the Zeus Trojan, the Spy right. Eye, all of these banking Trojans. They are also inside a lot of networks, a lot of uh, corporations. Right, right. We see a lot of uh, stolen and compromised data going out from all of these uh, you know, compromised uh, uh, machines, let's say, right. machines that are enterprise machines. So again, education of, of employees is important. Obviously, um, you know, keeping the perimeter defenses is important, but I would say more detection, more uh, uh, investigation tools. And uh, another thing is more resistant infrastructure. And here, I don't want to give specifics, but virtualization right. is something that is very, very uh, crucial. And it's something that we started to uh, use internally for security. Not for IT uh, you know, reasons, but actually for, for security. security. Uh, once you have, once you virtualize uh, uh, specific zones, um, you make sure that if the perimeter or the endpoint is uh, infected with something, right, it doesn't mean that the attacker has access into the virtualized, right, uh, right. you know, environment. The second thing is that you control the, uh, uh, you know, you can control it better. You can patch it more quickly. You know, you can run more tools on that. You have more visibility, right? So that's the kind of uh, new technologies that I think will emerge. Um, in, in, you know, to try to combat this new era of, uh, of cybercrime. Thank you very much, Yuri. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check out some other webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.